So imagine with me in your mind that uh, as, as soon as we're done with this Christmas Eve service, my family and I, we take off and we head to the Grand Canyon, okay? And we, we have to drive. We can't afford to fly there, but that's 1,100 miles. If you were to drive that straight, that is 16 plus hours. But, but my family, I have three small children, and we can turn a three-hour trip into a six-hour trip. It's a spiritual gift. We're very good at that. <laughs> so just imagine how long that trip would take me. And just imagine how many times I have heard, he touched me, he touched me. And I will yell to the back, don't make me pull this car over. Just imagine how many times, but we have finally made it to the Grand Canyon. And we go to the visitor center, and we spend two days there. Two days in the visitor center, and we talk to park rangers. We read every brochure that they have printed. They have movies that you can watch. They have pictures, magnificent pictures. You should see the pictures. They are beautiful, and they have maps. Oh, do they have maps? You can pull them out about all the ways and places that you can hike, and we spend two days there, and then we pack up in the car, and we come home, all without taking the extra half mile to go see the Grand Canyon itself. You say, Pastor, that is an absolutely insane illustration. It is no less insane to miss Christ during Christmas. That's great. Amen. Glory. Listen to me. Amidst the lights, amidst the songs, amidst the family and the presence, how sad you are that COVID has ruined certain plans and all of the distraction. All of the busyness that overwhelms us, listen to me, do not miss Christ this Christmas. Amen. The Bible is full of sad examples of those who miss the point. Jesus says they see, but they don't see. They hear, but they don't hear. John chapter 6 is one of those exact uh, stories. Let me read for you a few verses out of John 6, 35 through 37. I'll explain the context here in a second. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. But I, say, uh, but I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. You see, Jesus has been moving in the northern region of Israel, in Galilee, and he has been performing miracle after miracle in these towns, and thousands of people have begun to follow him. No one has ever seen what he is doing. I mean, he heals a blind man who can suddenly see. And so the masses are coming to him. And they would sit and they would listen to Jesus preach all day and talk and teach about the kingdom of heaven. And they would sit there for hours upon hours and Jesus had compassion upon them. The scripture says he had so much compassion upon them. And one time he turns to his disciples, he says, it's late in the day, they have sat here and they have listened to me teach all day, feed them. They say, we don't have any food. So that boy over there has two fish and five loaves, bring it here. And he multiplies it. And John details that more than 5,000 men were there. All right, so you do the math, and, and, and that's at least 10,000, maybe 15,000, including women and children. They picked up 12 baskets when they were done. Now, John says that the crowd was so ecstatic, they were so excited in that moment that they, listen to John 6, 15, it says, so Jesus perceiving that they intended to come and to take him by force and to make him king, right? They wanted to make him king right there. 
You feed all of us just like that. You are special. We want to make you king. So Jesus goes off and slips through and goes off by himself. He tells his disciples, meet me on the other side of Galilee. Meet me on the other side. Well, the next day, Jesus and his disciples are on the other side, and the crowd wakes up, and they're like, hey, where'd he go? Well, a number of them got in their boats because they heard where he went, and they followed after him. And they rode across the Sea of Galilee, and they got there to the other side, and they finally got to Jesus. And Jesus says, you're here for the wrong reasons. You're only here because I fed you yesterday. You're here because you think of what you can get from me and all you want from me is miracles and a money ticket. You want to figure out what your next meal is. You are not here for the right reasons. And he begins to press them. They say to him, but, 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 but Moses, he was a great prophet. And Moses had bread come up from the ground every day and fed them and fed them and fed them. Remember, Jesus was compassionate. He fed them. But he can see into their heart. He can perceive that they are there for all the wrong reasons. And they say, but, but Moses provided that bread. And Jesus looks at them and says, I am the bread. I am the bread of life. I have come down from heaven Glory. So, that, so that the emptiness in your soul might be filled. Whoever eats what I came to bring or whoever drinks will never thirst again. But they see but don't see. That's what he says to them. They see, but they don't see. They will get mad at him and they will leave. And they will, they will leave angry and truthfully justified in their own minds. They will go back to their previous life, completely unchanged. They will not follow Jesus. They will go back to their own jobs, to their old routine, and they will be spiritually hungry still. And truth be told, we can go through the entire Christmas season, and you can go back to work, back to your old routine, talk to your coworker, how was Christmas? Huh? Yeah. Spiritually hungry. But the sad reality is there he was, the Son of God, standing right in front of them, offering eternal bread to fill the core emptiness in their soul, to satisfy the deepest longing of their heart. And all they can think about is their stomach and their next meal. And Jesus says, you see, but you don't see. You see, but you don't believe. But listen to me, it doesn't have to be that way. Because buried right here in the context of this scripture passage is a promise, is a plea from God to you that I don't want you to miss. Jesus is offering himself. He says, for all who come and believe, you will find eternal filling. You say, yeah, pastor, but they believed, right? They wanted to make him king. And, and they came, they got in a boat and went on the other side of the sea. How do I know that my coming, that my believing is, is proper to God? How do I know that I'm not missing Jesus this Christmas? Come in your sin. Come in in your sin. Listen to that. In your sin, come to him. You see, they felt entitled, looking for a miracle worker to overthrow the Romans and become their king. They felt entitled to the things of this world, and they missed Jesus. 
And the truth of the matter is, is so will we, because so often we come to Jesus entitled for all the wrong reasons. But to those who come to him in their sin, you see, there is a fear, an intimidation, a shame that makes us hide and not want to come to him. Because fear that we will be exposed standing before him. It's to you that this passage pleads. And it says, come. Come. Well, who can come? All. All. That includes you. No matter your sin, no matter your social standing, you can come. But listen to me, I I know your heart. I know because I have the same questions and confusion in my own heart. And so let me read for you a portion from a great uh, uh, Puritan from the past, John Bunyan. Because you say this in your heart, and he writes it. He says, but I am a great sinner. Whoever comes, I will never cast out. But I am an old sinner, you say. I will never cast you out. But I am a hard-hearted sinner. I will never cast you out. But I am a backsliding sinner. I have served Satan all of my days. I have sinned against you. I have sinned against the mercy that you continue to bring to me. I have no good thing inside of me. I have nothing to bring to you. I will never cast you out. But just the moment that you think I'm going to come to him, you still race in your mind. You still say, but wait, you don't understand, Jesus. I've really messed up in all kinds of ways. I know, he responds. Well, you know most of it. Certainly more than most, but, but there is a sickness deep down inside of me that is hidden from everyone else. I know it all. Well, the thing is, it's not just my past. It's, it's my present, too. I understand. But I don't know if I can break free from this sin. At least not anytime soon. That's the only kind of person I've come to help. The burden is heavy. It's heavier all the time. Then let me carry it. It's too much for me to bear. Not for me. You don't get it. My offenses, they aren't directed towards others. They are against you, God. Then I am the one most suited to forgive you and to deal with your sin. But the more of the ugliness in me that you discover, the sooner you will get tired and you will say, I am fed up with you. Whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. Don't miss Christ this Christmas. Don't see, but not see. The lights, the songs, this service, the special time of year. He is the Grand Canyon. He is all. All that you should behold. And he says, come to me. He is offering himself. That is what all the songs are about. That is what all the lights are about. That's what all the pageantry is about. He is the Grand Canyon. And he says, whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, I pray right now in your name all across this room that your Holy Spirit is doing work that only you can do. We we don't want to miss Christmas. We don't want to miss you. Father, if there is anyone here that does not know you, may they come to you in their sin. 
may they lay it at the foot of the cross, realizing that the baby born in a manger in a feeding trough came to die for them. I pray in their heart they find you. For you are better. You are so much better than any, any other thing. And we worship you, Jesus. We pause to say thank you. None of the pageantry, none of it means anything without you. But if you are on your throne, then everything is right for us to sing and to praise and to be filled with joy. Enjoy our time with our family. If you are ruling and reigning in our hearts, And so I pray that all across this room and for those who are at home in their living room, you are King Jesus. And we bow before you. We bow before you. Amen.